Hello and welcome to The Circuit, Tech Point's podcast that tells the human stories behind the major tech headlines of Indiana. I am your host, Jason Penrod. And if you don't recognize me, that's because I'm generally the guy behind the camera and the producer of this podcast. The reason for this uncharacteristically public appearance is today's guest, who I could not be more excited for. We are joined today by Lindsay Chepkema, CEO and founder of Casted, the very platform TechPoint uses for our podcast. Lindsay, welcome to the circuit. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. All right. Uh, Well, ordinarily, we typically ask guests something along the lines of, for those not familiar, explain what Casted does, but something that I've been noticing on social media with... uh, the whole casted crew is some sort of comment along the lines of casted is not a hosting platform. Can you explain what you mean by that? Yeah. So tell you what we don't do, right? Um, we'll, we'll go backwards. Um, yeah. So casted is, you know, th- okay. There are so many, so many like one off tools and point solutions to help you start a podcast cheap, fast, and easy, right? If you and I want to, today is May the 4th. And so if we wanted to start a Star Wars podcast, we could do that really cheap, really fast and really easy. Um, there's a lot of those. We have so many options. Um, Casted, conversely, uh, is not that. We serve specifically B2B marketers um, in helping them to use the power of podcast, audio and video content Um to really fuel their entire marketing strategy. So it's a full-on platform that says, hey, you go create rich audio and video content um, and we're going to help you get it out to the world, publish it, syndicate it, host it, yes, but also give you myriad ways to ring it out, use it across multiple channels, search through what you have so you can repurpose it, reuse it, maximize your reach, um, and therefore maximize and also measure the revenue that it generates for the business. Awesome. Yeah. Well, so this week is actually a pretty momentous week for you. I think it was your fourth birthday, correct? Indeed. Yeah. Uh, well, happy birthday. Thank you. Um, I noticed that you had posted on LinkedIn your original like whiteboarding session for the con <laughs> of Casted. I'm just curious how much of what Casted is now was in that original pitch and what has evolved since from that pitch? Yeah, the vision, the overall big picture vision has remained the same. Um, And so I'm so glad that I still have those pictures because, um, you know, literally my day one, uh, going back to the the post that you're referencing, my first day of a CEO of a company with no employees, no customers, no product. Yeah. um, All I had was a vision, right? And uh, just tenacity to make it come to life. And so First thing I did was I just started writing all over the whiteboards and I wrote things like, you know, empowering the marketer, empowering the B2B marketer to prove their value. Um, And uh, it's not it's not a podcast tool. It's a content marketing platform. that's built around audio and video. And I need to be able to measure it like things like that um, that have really fueled our direction, have fueled Mm -hmm. our roadmap, have fueled our messaging um, since day one. And it's really exciting to see what parts of the platform have out, have, have come to life, have come to fruition, because you, you, of course you have to start with the MVP. So we had to start with something that was just a crumb of what it is today. But yeah, here we are now. It's a, it's a full-on platform serving B2B marketers, empowering them to prove their value um, and really maximize the impact of their audio and video content. So yeah, a lot of it's come to fruition, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. The time that you launch Casted, um, I know that it, podcasts were obviously uh, buzzing for a while, but it was like right at that moment when every company was starting to consider launching their own podcast. And um, in particular, I remember a talk at HubSpot that was, or Inbound, that was something to the effect of podcasting is the last long form piece of content that you can actually captivate an entire audience for. But, but the the challenge for all of us was like, well, I can't actually prove ROI for this. <laughs> like, yeah. I can't actually come to my CEO or my CFO and say like, oh, yes, we're generating this amount of leads from from the podcast. Was it? Um, I have to wonder, like, is that something? So 
five years ago, you were VP of brand and content for Marsis, and you were <laughs> so uh, the host of their podcast as well. Is that yep. where the uh, idea for Cast has started to gestate? I know that you've been in content marketing pretty much your entire career. So this sense of like proving your worth is like inherent to like all oh, yeah. marketers. Yeah, it, um, it's deep. <laughs> but I'm just trying to figure out like when that that started to form for you where you're like, yeah. I think this is something we can do. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So the the background as in, in content marketing and um, B2B marketing, that's that's been my entire adult life. And so I absolutely feel in my bones the pain that, that marketers go through. Um, but specifically what we're solving for at Cast Day, yeah, you're right. Um, started when I was running brand and content for Amarsis, which is a global enterprise MarTech company. Um, and we, like many of our now customers, um, I started a podcast. I did some video work with our customers. It was really great. I was really proud of what we were doing. I had the luxury of my CEO um, of, of the global company. He sat here in Indy. And so I saw him at the office and he would high five me and be like, I listened to the podcast on my run today. I love it so much. You're doing so great. Like he loved it. I think that that's, that's not something that all marketers that start something like a podcast always have. Like they, mm -hmm. it's, it's always an uphill battle, but I, I got a little bit of pushback in starting it and putting budget behind it from day, from the very beginning. But once we started churning them out, I had tons of buy-in. And I remember I was sitting in um, a meeting with him, my CEO and he was like, Lindsay, I can't wait to hear what the podcast is doing for the business. Tell, tell me how much it's generating. Like, it's got to be doing great mm. things. Like, he was coming at it, like, couldn't, like, in, wanted me to tell him all of the great things that it, surely it was doing. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I, downloads, number of downloads. <laughs> and I've got some great feedback. Like, I came with quotes from people yeah. like, I love the podcast. You know, I had, I was armed with nothing. I came to, you know, a gunfight with just some, like, winter gloves. Like I just, <laughs> I, I, I just, um, yeah, that was really frustrating, especially working at a MarTech company that mm -hmm. proves value for marketers. Like that's what we did. And I couldn't turn around and do the same. Um, and I looked all over the place for something like casted and it didn't exist. It was just, you know, we talked at the beginning of the, of the show about all the one-off tools and point solutions to help you start a podcast. Those existed. But there was no casted that was made for a marketing team, for a, a B2B marketing team to use it as content, just like you would all of the other content in your strategy um, and be able to understand who is listening and and who is engaging and how they're engaging and what that means for sales and how it could prove the value to the business. So, yeah, absolutely. That that experience combined with, you know, a career's worth of experience as a content marketer um, led me to see, one, what an opportunity this is. Um but also what a need it is. And, mm -hmm. um, and also like on the, on the human level, how much marketers are struggling, especially content marketers to, to prove their value. Um, it's, right. it's pretty high level. It can be, feel really ethereal sometimes. And so, yeah, we set out to, to change that. So it is, it's an interesting thing that you bring up because like, I, I understand like, the, the pain that you're solving for with Casted is ultimately marketers being able to prove their ROI, which is mm -hmm. tough. It's it's difficult for whatever piece of content that you create, mm -hmm. whether it's a podcast, a blog, or gated piece of content. Yep. Um, I understand that pain, but like, how are you equipping content marketers that are interested in your your platform? to be that sales champion, to then turn around and have that conversation with a skeptical CEO, CFO, even a CMO that is like, no, I, why aren't we doing like a cheaper platform or a point? Mm -hmm. And um, we just need to host a podcast. So why do we need casted? How, mm -hmm. how are you having that conversation with, with content yeah. marketers? I mean, it's ongoing. Yeah. Um, but the key is education, right? Is marketing. Like we're we're marketing. Yeah. Um, and when you're when you're introducing a new idea or a new approach, especially a new idea or a new approach to a new channel, a new format, a new technology, um, that requires a lot of education, a lot of taking your audience by the hand and saying, "Doesn't have to be this way. There's a better way. 
let me tell you about this way. Let me show you. Let me show you what other customers are doing. Let me show you what's possible. Um, there's a lot of that because we're not we're not the cheaper, faster, shinier version of something else. So we can't say, hey, are you spending too much with X, Y, and Z company? We can beat that in this way. It's, hey, it's it's really, really understanding um, your audience and, and what they're going through and why they're doing what they're doing and the pressure that they're under. Um, it's We're marketing, marketing to marketers, uh-huh. <laughs> and, right. which is sure. the coolest. Um, but also it's challenging because it's, it's like, it's such a crowded space. There's so much happening in MarTech. And, and especially now, marketers' budgets and their teams are under more pressure and, and more hey, constraints. Um, they're, they're spread more thin than they have been in a very long time. And so really understanding what that's like, really, really under, being able to empathize and say, hey, this is we know that this is what you're going through. We know that you see what we see as far as the future of B2B marketing. And we've got a path forward. Like, um, So yeah, in short, it's a lot of education. Yeah. Do you feel like it's in general, um, bigger brands that that's an easier conversation to have, like your, your enterprise level or like people that have like a heavy investment in marketing already, like they have a full blown team, a very mature marketing team that they're like, we get the ROI of this tool. Is that an easier conversation than for you than like smaller, scrappier teams typically? There, it's different. Um, you were getting into like personas and things, right? So right. Um, you told me we were going to geek out about content marketing, yeah, which right. I'm very yeah, excited yeah. about. Um, yeah, it's different personas. So like our, we have the luxury of being able to work with customers like IBM and Salesforce mm-hmm. and and um, mid-market companies like Gong and uh, Drift and companies of that size. And then we're also starting to work with some some startups, a lot of which are here in Indy, which is very cool. Right. And those three companies, although they're trying to do the same thing, they're trying to be the connective tissue between their brand and their audience, right? And podcasts are uniquely positioned to help them do that. And we help them do that. And ultimately, we do the same thing, help you maximize and measure the reach of your audio and video content. But for an enterprise company, they are looking at us for help us with with governance, help us, like we need to make sure you're SOC 2 compliant, which we are. We need to... We have so much content. We have so many people all around the world that are going rogue and creating podcasts all over the place. Help us get it all into one place. Give us a centralized place and process um, to to manage all this content, to be able to use all this content and measure it all in one unified way. So mm. that's that's what enterprises are dealing with. Whereas mid market and down to to startup size, it's like that. That's where you really feel that I am a team of one now. Like it used to be a team of three and now it's just me and I, my budget got cut by 75% and my goals are still the same. Like, please help. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I'm doing this show or I want to do this show. I know that it's the way forward. Like, please help me maximize my time, be more efficient and more effective. And we can absolutely do that too, because everything that happens in Casted is you go create your show and we're going to help you ring it out really easy. And in, mm-hmm. whether it's a global team dispersed across four continents using cast it all in one place, or literally one person trying to make sure that they're squeezing every drop out of every episode, we we can do that. So it's it, again, it's just really understanding who they are, why they're interested in working with us, what they need us to deliver for them and making sure we meet them with it, where they are every time. Gotcha. And you, so um, you bring up the persona of the the startup company um you've had a recent bit of news or it's at least maybe six months ago <laughs> that you've launched the casted for startups program can you walk us through that program and what the benefit is to startups yeah yeah so it's um we it's not an original idea we totally took the idea <clears throat> from from companies that served us in our earliest days um gong and hubspot and drift like they um they inspired us because they also have programs like this where it's it's basically it's a, a three-year tiered discount program okay. um, that gives startups access to the same exact platform. It's a, the um, starter package of Casted um, just at a deeply, deeply discounted rate, like mm-hmm. down by, you know, I think it's like 75% or more the first year, and then it's around 50% the second year, 25% the third year. Um, as the company grows, you know, we grow with them. And it gives companies that that understand the value of authentic conversations and and the power that podcast and video content has in growing a brand 
Mm-hmm. And if they, they know that getting started with this type of content from day one will help them grow faster. It will help them establish a really strong brand. Like they get that. Um, and so we wanted to make cast it available to them so they didn't have to start with all of the one-off tools and point solutions and then and try to, because that's harder. Like when you have a team of one person or you have a founder that's trying to do all of the things, it's really hard to try to piecemeal together a bunch of point solutions. And so right. we say, hey, how can we help? And so, yeah, we get to work with a lot of really cool companies um, here in, including those here in, in Indy, like um, Trava and Bolster and Lumivate. Um, there's there's a lot that we we get to work with right here in Indy, which is really cool. That's awesome. Um, you you know you talk about like that, like how difficult it is to establish that podcasting brand for the the scrappier uh, one to two person teams. Um, what like say say I am an early stage startup and I I am that one to two person scrappy marketing team. Why why should I be considering launching a podcast at all at this point? Or Mm -hmm. why would it be essential to the growth of of my brand? Like at this point, you know, we're maybe a year or two from like publicly announcing the company. Yeah. So we're still trying to figure things out. Why why is this an essential piece to establishing my brand kind of globally, I guess? I love that question. Because um, so many reasons. One is that you need to establish a brand anyway. Like I the marketer in me is like, I want to take them by their shoulders and be like, you need to do this um, because your brand is perception. It's not pretty colors on a website. It's, it is literally, it's your reputation. It's how people perceive you. And if you don't pay attention, like your culture, like if you're not intentional about it, it will create itself. And so it's going to happen either way. So get ahead of it, understand um, what you stand for, why you're doing what you're doing and tell people, right? And and have those conversations. So you you need to focus on your brand. You need to focus on messaging and 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 telling people who you are, why you are, what you do. You need to do that anyway. If you need to do that anyway, and let's say you're an entire team of one, like you're just a founder. Maybe there's a there's, you know two or three of you on the entire team. Maybe there's less than ten. You need to do that anyway, and this is the most efficient way, right? Like if I had asked you to please write me a blog post that I could post on my website, that would take you a lot more time and cognitive load than just, will you come have a conversation with me and and literally talk about what you are most um, passionate about and have the most expertise in? It lets that founder or that early team um, be more efficient with their time and establish relationships. So those early founders, like I've been there, um, it's really hard to get in front of people to establish relationships sometimes, especially if you're trying to sell things or you're trying to ask for something. Podcast is literally like, I, I'm not asking for anything. I just want you to come share your expertise. Um, I want to build a relationship with you and be the conduit through which your brain power goes to, you know, my audience. And hopefully that helps us all. It's more effective. It's, it's really effective. It's more efficient. Um, and it's powerful. Um, hmm. Spending that half hour or an hour once a week or once every other week with um, customers, industry experts, investors, uh, recording their thoughts and ideas is helpful to that early team and helping them learn and grow. Um, and it's a really great way to establish relationships with them and with your early audience. So it's it's like the best thing you can do. You So do you feel like what's kind of key for customer fit, whether it's a startup or enterprise or even mid-market is there's like a really, there there's already a perceived value in branding. Like there's, they they understand that. And, and maybe that's a little like vague, but like some companies are just like, if we exist, we're fine. We don't need yeah. to like have like, there's not necessarily a through line between like everything they do that creates that brand feel like mm-hmm. is that kind of I guess the key marker for someone that's a good fit casted yeah that's a good question I mean I I could I've been asked before like should everyone have a podcast <laughs> and and I can make the argument that yes yes everyone should um or it would at least be beneficial to everyone yeah, we- and but I mean specifically about who's a good fit for casted and who is casted a good fit for 
yeah, it's um, it's companies that care about thought leadership. And and to your point, yeah. yes, some some care more than others. Some should care more than others. Others, um, it's a completely different model, and that's cool. But most companies that need to establish trust with their audience. I mean, think financial services, fintech, um, in, investors, VCs, um, anyone who um, relies on trust from their audience and, and relies on being seen as the trusted guide, the trusted advisor, the people who know what's going on, mm-hmm. they can really benefit from podcasting and they're forecasted um, because it's it's such a rich and authentic way to communicate that thought leadership and to to earn trust. And there's all kinds of studies that talk about it too, that the podcasting in particular, because of the way that you consume the media, typically it's passive. It's while you're doing something else. It just hit, it, it literally hits different. And right. it's a really great way to to establish that trust. And so yeah, I mean, if you don't need it, if it's not a top priority, if it doesn't feel like it's top priority, you know, maybe every business model, it's not the very um, it's not the thing that they absolutely need to be putting all of their time and energy into, but I, I think most of the time there's a really, there's a good case to be made for yeah. it. Yeah. How, I, I mean, this is maybe a semi controversial question, but like when you talk about establishing thought leadership and trust within, uh, within the podcast, how important is it in your eyes that you're you're putting the host is typically someone like a ceo like yourself um uh stephanie cox also ceo of lumivate is the host of their podcast yep um matt blumberg and bolster is is the the host of their new show yep how how essential i mean certainly when you you look at like a group like hubspot um or salesforce they're they're huge on a level and like Mark Benioff has got enough stuff on his plate to not be recording an hour a week on a yeah. podcast. Um, I guess to you, how valuable is it that for brands to have a CEO be the host versus yeah. someone on the marketing team or <laughs> an engagement manager or um, yeah. someone from sales? Yeah, I, 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 I love that question. I get asked that a lot. Um, and you're right, quite often it is someone in the C-suite. It's the CMO, it's the CEO, it's the founder. Not always, though. Um, uh, Lev, they, their show started with two salespeople. Right. Um, and it's another great indie company. Right. Um, started with two salespeople who were talking about, you know, things that came up in their sales conversations. And that group. And that's a great place to start. So... Um, and we see some some really cool shows led by product leaders or by customer success leaders or by more junior people in any area of the business. Mm-hmm. And the way you can get to who should be the host and ultimately also who should be on the show as guests is who is it for? Who yeah. is this show for and why are you doing it, right? If you are trying to reach people who are end users of your product, who are um, really interested in how it works and why it works and want to know some of the latest about what's happening in, in your space and um, in the space that you serve. Somebody who is a- an engineer or a product um, leader or even, even a more junior leader um, in product in your team, all for example's sake, might be a really good fit, right? Like you don't need the CEO doing that show. Um, and if it's an internal podcast, like who there could be a great, um, a great voice. So really, it's it's all about who is this for? How well can you know your audience? Again, like the more you know your audience, the better, the more you can empathize with who they are, what they're struggling with, what they want to know. That's where you can pair up one or even a couple of hosts that are going to be able to really um, speak to them, but mm-hmm. also speak to the people who are going to be relevant to them and draw out of those guests what's going to be really interesting to that audience. Don't always assume that it's you know someone in the C-suite. Um, it might very well not be. And the same thing with all of your guests. It doesn't have to be the best-selling author yeah. or the you know Fortune 500 CEO. Like, who's your audience going to care about? Um, right. Do they need to see themselves in your guests? Do they need to be inspired? Do they need to be educated? Um, there's a lot you can do. And the more you do something that's unique to 
your show and your audience and your brand, the more you're going to cut through the noise. Gotcha. So you have been doing, I mean, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, you were the host of Marker and Machine podcast for Marsis before starting po- uh, starting Casted. Um, and also you're the host, obviously, of uh, Casted's podcast or podcast plural. Um, how has your own use of the Casted platform informed your growth as a podcast host? Um, and just how has it impacted your approach to storytelling in general? Yeah, very good question. I Over the years, I have um, become more and more in tune with um, what we need to get out of every episode mm-hmm. and how to... I'm not saying we do a good job of this. It's just more top of mind. Um, And that it shouldn't just be, hey, I'm going to have a conversation with Jason and just, you know, see what he's doing and have the same interview with you that you have with everybody else. But like, at least try to get to what can this person bring that's unique to my audience and how can I uniquely pull that out of them and and make that remember because you're the connective tissue between your brand and the audience. And so how can you, what can you uniquely pull out of that person that it's, it's tailored specifically for your audience. And sometimes that's easier than others. I think you, you, the questions that you sent over before this, like I, you do a great job of it. And, um, I think that that's, that's become a lot more top of mind to me. It can be, you know, you're nervous at first, the first, um, you know, couple seasons or whatever that you do any show, you're just so focused on making sure you're getting it right and you're doing it well. Mm-hmm. But over time, it's like, no, this is this is an opportunity to have a really rich conversation that I really want my audience to listen in on. Like, how can I make it good? And how can I really let the expertise of that guest really flow through? Gotcha. Do you... Um, so I have a couple of follow-up questions to that. One is, do you fall back into kind of the mindset of... Um, you know, a content marketer where you're like almost thinking about the structure of the conversation as like a blog post in a way, like, you know, this is going to end up as a transcript. So how can I make this like a pillar piece or something like that? Mm -hmm. Does that, does that process ever like happen when like you're on the questions or things like that? I think once a content marketer, always a content marketer. Right. right? Um, (laughs) Yes, I, I definitely. Well, I think when I'm thinking about like the structure of a conversation, I just try to make sure it flows like mm-hmm. um, kind of pulling back the curtain. Like you sent me some questions ahead of time, but like you're not going through and being like, OK, question number two. Right. Like, you, right. you kind of you you jump around and you make sure that it makes sense and that you go from one topic to another. And so I try to make sure I try to do that so that it flows both for the, the guest and for the listener. That it's not like, wait, were we just talking about AI? Why are we talking about strawberries now? Like what's happening? <laughs> um yeah. So there's that. But then also, yes, to your point, I'm always, I'm, I'm hardwired to think of the end in mind. And so mm-hmm. before I even go into the interview, it's like, okay, what, I have an hour with this person. What questions do I want to ask both for this show, but also for the myriad other things that we're doing? Like yeah. if I know that we're going to do um, a couple series about X, Y, and Z topics over the next few months, like how can I, yeah, do the interview about topic X, but also like, ask a couple of questions at the end about, you know, topic Y so that I have that and I can use that right. and amplify that in all these different ways later because I've, I've got you here now. Why not ask all these right. questions now? Yeah. Um, so it's not just been four you, years of oh. you using the casted oh. platform. I mean, you have also <laughs> for four years been kind of the thought leader in the podcast space of the Indiana B2B podcasting community, which has oh, like, well, thank you. Just, yeah. Um, <laughs> but you, we have like such a rich, uh, following of different podcasters in the area. Um, we, we talked about Trava, we talked about Luma Bait, um, Lindsay McGuire over at Formstack does a fantastic oh, yeah. job. Um, <laughs> I'm just, you know, knowing that you have access to this rich community, like how has that also changed the way that you approach your own podcast? Like what, what ideas are, have been worth stealing? Like what, what 
other people have inspired you within the indie tech community? I'm just yeah. curious. Man, this is, um, there's a lot here, a lot to unpack, as they say. <laughs> um, I'm glad to be here um, in Indy. I'm, I'm not from here. I'm from Michigan, um, the mitten shaped motherland, as I like to call it. And um, by Where way of Chicago. Mitten? And what's that? Where on the mitten? Lansing. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. Yes. Um, if I talk long enough, my Michigan starts yeah, to show up. But, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's been a good place to be for lots of reasons. Um, specifically to podcasting, I mean, Ashley Flowers uh, and like the the birth of true crime podcast, which is a totally different world <laughs> than where what we live in with B2B podcasts. Like that's that she's from Indiana, right. I think Indianapolis. And, um, you know, like you said, there's a there's a lot of SaaS startups. There's a lot of MarTech here. Um, those tend to be early adopters of things like thought leadership and content marketing and okay. podcasting. So that's strong. And then for us as a as a business, um, I mean, having investors um, right here in Indy, you know, between Elevate and High Alpha, both of which are a big part of our story, um, seeing the value, understanding, seeing down the street and around the corner that podcasting is going to be a huge part of MarTech um, from day one, like that's all here already. Um, and then talent, we've had we have been able to build a team that even though we're here, we're fully remote now, like most of our team is here in Indy, um, mm. because, because we can, you know, and, and so, um, you asked specifically about how that fuels a podcast, but that's, that's been, how does that fuel our story? Um, being here in Indy has been huge. And then I think, um, working with those, those leaders and then knowing them well, like I know we've, Stephanie Cox came up, she's a good friend of mine and, all of all of these other companies and marketing leaders and CEOs and founders that we get to work with that are doing great shows, like I, I know them and I I go to <laughs> you know tech point events and powder keg events and you know, high alpha events and elevate events like and I see them there and I I know them outside of their shows and I and we're able to share ideas about about brand building and about the shows and about how to be better and stronger and how the platform can be better and so um, I don't know it's just I I can't imagine doing this somewhere else. It's just been such a great home to fuel our growth, uh, to fuel our team and to, to really help inform the product by people who know a lot <laughs> about it. Do you think that, I mean, I've heard different people touch on this and different discussions, like different entrepreneurs, different founders talk about just kind of the uniqueness of, um, not just Indiana startups or Indiana tech, but also just like Midwest in general, like there's a welcoming um, culture that at least allows for like, you know, I'm, I'm willing to help you. We're not, we're not necessarily competing. Yeah. Even if we are competing, I like ever, I want everyone to succeed sort of yeah. mentality versus kind of like a Bay area vibe or Austin or something along those lines. Do you, do you, does that resonate with you as well? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Just, um, being a startup founder in Indianapolis is you're never alone. Like there's so many people that are, there's so many startups here and it's not the size of Boston or mm -hmm. New York or San Francisco that the, the concentration, I wish that we had like the ratio and, and data and numbers, but like the concentration of like founders and people who have been who have led or funded or been on the board of or or been a part of a SaaS startup yes. like compared with the the actual pot like general population the ratio is very high and so <laughs> being able to to say yeah I'm doing this thing and here's the challenges and here's the successes like you can't like your stone throw away from from someone who has been there is there Maybe. or hoping to be there and um, that's just not the case in much larger cities. Um, even if they have all kinds of innovation happening, there's so much other, there's so much else happening. Um, but here it's, it is a community that is warm and welcoming. You have, I mean, the Midwest values, it's, it's a real thing. And people do really want to help. They want to connect. They want to listen. They want to um, share. And I really have leveraged that a lot over the last four yeah. years and will continue to do so. That's great. That's great. Um, is this, this is backtracking to like a question from earlier about 
um, you know, it, you just had your four year anniversary of the founding of Casted. As you look to um, the next four years and how like you've iterated the past four years, what do you see um, evolving in the podcasting landscape in terms of, you know, wider adoption of video as a format, um, the, the increased presence of AI? Um, how do you see, one, the podcasting landscape changing, but also how do you see cast it evolving in the next four years yeah we uh, looking back over the last four years i mean when we got started the bulk of our conversations were hey you should start a podcast <laughs> would you start a podcast could you start a podcast yeah and now four years later the conversations and all of the data behind it about like the wave that we the shot that we called um we knew this was happening we saw the wave coming um thus the reason that we started this business and now here we are four years later and the conversations have, have evolved to be, hey, you have a podcast. What's it doing for your business? Mm -hmm. How, what are you doing with it? How are you getting more value out of it? And so it's, it's optimization. And where will we be four years from now? Podcasting will continue to grow. I think you mentioned video and podcasting. Um, they're already starting to become synonymous. Um, we're we're hard-pressed to find customers and, and brands that are like, nope, audio only. I only want to do audio. Even if it's just like, I, I, I'll do the video too, but I only want to use it for some promotion. Like everybody is moving to audio and video together. And I love seeing it's because I love seeing the thinking with the end in mind, like we talked about before mm -hmm. of because of all these things I want to do with it. Like I'm going to have this interview with, with Jason, like what else can I do with that interview right. besides just publishing it on my RSS feed? So that's, that's the near term. And I'm seeing that evolve and I love that. Um, and that's everything we talked about was amplified marketing, right? Like this whole approach to B2B marketing that I get up on a soapbox and talk about all the time, which is mm -hmm. that think with the end in mind and, and capture these conversations and ring them out across all of your channels. Um, four years from now, uh, we couldn't get through a podcast without talking about AI. Could we, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think not even four years, I think over the next few months, especially in MarTech and SaaS, um, we're going to see a lot of changes. I think some good, some not so good. I think there's going to be um, some innovations and then there's going to be some backtracking of like, wait, 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 wait. I don't know if we really like that one. Let's redo. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's try this again. Um, but I mean, already there's, there's AI to do with voice, um, and with video that you can create, um, conversations that didn't actually happen. You can create video and, and audio conversations that didn't actually happen. Is that a good thing? Yeah. I don't really think so. Um, I think there's a place for it. Um, with some editing and and some um, things that make you more efficient, but to to net create these these very human conversations and very human experiences without the humans, um, I think that that's something that we will see become available. And over the next four years, um, I think that we will see the rise of the creative and strategic marketers saying, "This is where we want this to exist. This is where we want this technology to assist us." and to serve us and to help us be better. And this is where we draw the line um, yeah. on human experiences. And I'm, I'm excited. I think it's easy to be afraid, but I'm, I'm excited to see how that all comes to fruition. And um, podcasts are going to be right at the center of all of it. You know, uh, what I find interesting about, um, you know, the, the AI debate particularly hits hard for um, people within the marketing realm, because it's kind of like this debate of like, should I, or shouldn't I? Um, but I, I know that. So what, what's interesting is there's already a shift to really desiring answers from humans, not just from like, a, I have a feeling that this is like written by AI, but I, I, I'm concerned that this is marketing copy. And I want yeah. just the nuts and bolts of this answer. Um, there's There was a statistic a while back ago, I think it was like last year, that something like 40% of Gen Z goes to TikTok or YouTube for answers before they go to like Google. Oh. And I think that that as a statistic was like thrown around as like everyone was scoffing at like, well, this is like another example of why Gen Z is like, misguided or something like that and at the core of it it's like they don't want to read 
your marketing copy. They want to see a human answer that question. They want yeah. years to answer that question. And what I find interesting, and it's one of my favorite features of Casted, is that clipping tool where you've really found a way to push podcasting into kind of the TikTok reels stories generation where like I can make a podcast digestible. I can show like a very brief clip and a very quick, like it's easy for me to produce. Do you feel like unintentionally you've gotten in front of like what might be a culture shift uh, as we start seeing more AI generated content on search and, and things like that? It was totally intentionally, oh, Jason. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> you know, yeah, no, I think so. I think Bohr was going to launch. Yeah, I, I totally, uh, I called this entire thing. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> I I have said it many times, especially, like, I've, I've had a lot of conversations about AI and, mm -hmm. and, and whatnot lately. Um, and I always go back to the most human brands win. Always have, always will, regardless of you know, what technology or strategy or challenge we're talking about, the most human brands win. Now, does that mean the ones that avoid tech? Absolutely not. It means the ones that, that really see tech as tools, as instruments to deliver more human experiences. And so therefore, Casted, that's, that's at the, the, the heart of our platform and our business too, is saying not how do we make a tool that helps people do things this way and, yeah. and do this very one thing and, and it can only be used in this way. It's like, no, how do we make an instrument, a platform that can be used that, that we say, hey, here's, here's the essence of this. Here's the spirit of why this exists. Here's how we want it to serve you. And it's flexible and it will continue to grow and evolve to serve you and help you serve others um, and to get creative. And so yeah, at, our, at the at the very beginning of Casted, did I like think about what you just said about like getting in front of, you know, Gen Z and TikTok? Like, no, but yeah. we we designed it saying, how do we serve the marketer to be able to to get creative in the platform and do what they know is best for their audience, which has by default like evolved to be able to do that and say, yeah, pull you know pull from your Casted content right now and and be able to create a something for TikTok and something that will be searchable on YouTube because as a marketer, you know that that's where you need to go. And, right. and, you know, two steps from now, how can we, as we build AI into the platform, it will very much be not to replace the person, but to serve the person um, that's using it. And uh, I think that that's, again, the most human, the most human brands win. And we're trying to not only do that ourselves, but help other marketers do the same. Well, that is probably one of the best places to end on. But I have a few quick fire questions Ready. for uh, letting you leave. Okay. Um, one, when you listen to podcasts, because I assume you do. Listen. 1X, 1.2, 1.5, or are you a 2X person? I am a 1X and quite often rewind and listen again. Oh I am... God. <laughs> I, I need to I need to really hear I'm a slow reader too I, I, it takes me forever to read because I like need to really consume the content so I am 1x all the way gotcha uh, what are your mm. three favorite non-b2b podcasts that you're currently listening to I I jump around I actually tend to follow the people um, so mm. whether they are guests or hosts of their own shows and so some of the people that I've been um, really following lately and kind of for a while. Um, Brene Brown, she's my best friend. She just doesn't know it yet. Right. Um, Tim Keller, Adam Grant, and oh, yeah. Simon Sinek are probably my my big four right now. And then actually, it's funny, I'm I'm actually, I'm literally not peddling him, but um, we were just talking about AI. So Paul Reitzer, okay. um, he has a an artificial marketing, artificial intelligence institute and a podcast to go with it. And so it's a great place to go. Um, to learn about what the heck is coming our way in marketing. Um, so that's that, that one is B2B, but that's a good one. Gotcha. 
Um, what is the most interesting or unconventional recent approach to the podcasting format that you're like, hmm, that's maybe an idea worth stealing? I actually talked to um, someone. She's going to be on my podcast. Um, she's going to cast a podcast soon. But I just interviewed her yesterday. And after we recorded, she was talking about how she's starting her own podcast. And she's thinking about doing not interview, but more of like a, just hop on and share her thoughts and her observations. And as we were talking, we we came up with a fun new idea. I don't know if she's going to do it or anybody else is going to do it, but I like the idea. Is um, if you're a guest on a lot of podcasts, um, like, so I would use this as an, as an example. Let's say I'm a guest on a bunch of podcasts. Mm-hmm. And after this, this um, show where I'm a guest on yours, I could go and while everything's still fresh, record my own like deeper dive of like, I know we talked about AI and podcasting. Here's um, the next step mm-hmm. deeper. And then that would be the show where it'd be like next steps. And then as you're publishing and promoting this episode, I could be like, thanks so much for having me on the show, Jason. It was so much fun to go a little bit deeper. Here's some follow-up thoughts that I recorded right after we recorded. And I was like, as we were talking about it, I was like, I love this idea. That's, I want to do that it. Is, I want somebody to do that. that very interesting. That is a good idea. Yeah. Um, this is a controversial question, but pod as a shorthand for podcast, is that cool or cringe? I don't know which is worse, calling them pods or calling them casts. I've heard them mm-hmm. called casts too. And I'm like, mm-hmm. um, it's a little cringy, but you know, to each their own. To each their own. Fair enough. Um, and to wrap us up for startups considering entering the podcast space, uh, what would you recommend they do to get started? Well, they should obviously talk to Casted. <laughs> um, we, they really should. Um, even if even if we're not a fit or, you know, whatever, we have a lot of resources. So, you know, visit Casted. But also just start. Um, the best place to start is just think about who it's for. Be really clear about who your audience is, why you're doing it, where does it fit into the buyer's journey in the, in the funnel, and then have have some great conversations, record them, and just just try it. Just get started and give yourself enough time to see it through for a few months. Awesome. Well, it has been great talking with you today. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Um, And uh, yeah, have a wonderful day. Thanks, Jason. 